Hello there guys, and welcome to 0 0.8, the long-awaited 0 0.8 that has been teased and teased and teased, and we saw, if you watched the stream event on Sunday, we saw a brief uh, encounter of 0 0.8, but it's finally here. If you haven't got it, I suggest you check your Steam, check in the downloads, and you should see it. I got mine yesterday where I am, so... It's about 4 gig, 4.4 gig, so it's not too bad. But it comes with a lot of stuff, so I thought I'd just do a quick video. Just go through quickly some of the new features. Not going to go through all of it, because obviously I want to find out some of the things whilst we're playing the single player game. Uh, but what I do highly recommend you do, because this is only going to be a quick video showing off some of the new things, is that you go and read the patch notes for 0 0.8. I will leave the link in the description below to the patch notes because there's a lot of information there uh, for the banking system, for the spawning system, how the gold works. There's a lot of information. Uh, so just to make sure that nobody's caught off guard, I really suggest that you go and read it through fully from start to finish the patch notes on how everything works. So let's jump straight into it. As you can see on the top right hand corner, You've got account balance and gold balance. Uh, that will be important <laughs> because uh, when you sport, when you die now, you have three options, like before: random sector or base, or your your spawn base where you set your spawn point. You can only spawn at your base with gold. So regardless of how much money you have, you can only spawn at your base with gold. So you need to get money, go to the bank, buy gold to have gold in your account so you can spawn at your base. Um, random and sector spawns cost money. I think it's 250 for a random and I think it's 1,000 for sector or um, something like that. You need to go and check the the patch notes for the exact price of how much it's going to cost so these are all the new features these are all the new features uh, i shouldn't be too close to that oh and that there as well but we'll get to him in a second so let's just start straight away as we're on the banking when you spawn in because it's a partial wipe so you would have lost all of your stuff but you will you will keep your character and your character's traits and skills so when you spawn in you will spawn in with a starter bank card, which is where your account balance will be. You will need to go to the bank and activate this to be able to use it in the traders. You need to be able to activate it uh, and obviously find money, basically. So get money to put on your account and sell things at the traders. Gold card, you have to buy at the bank. It gives you a two-digit pin protection, which for single player doesn't really matter, but it is important for um, multiplayer servers. A daily withdrawal limit of 5,000 cash and a daily deposit limit of 5,000 of cash, whereas the starter card only has a daily withdrawal limit of 500. But if you've got the card, you shouldn't really need the cash, really. So, you know, it's a bit like real life. You've got a card, you've with card if you got cash you got cash what would be good is if they somehow randomize the traders to pay with cad or cut cash or card that would be good so one day you go in there and it's you know card only and then the next day you go in there after x amount of time it says oh no the terminals are broken you have to pay with cash sorry so then you'd be forced to sort of withdraw the cash but whatever they may implement something like that in the future i have no idea so yeah gold card you will need to get a gold card to buy gold. So you need to get as much money as you can, buy the gold card for 5,000 bucks, some bucks. Then you will be able to buy gold so you can respawn back at your base. That's basically how it works. But like again, like I said, I suggest you go and read the patch notes on all of the full details of how the uh, banking system works. Fame points also now have a bigger role you will not be able to buy certain items based on your fame points so like now with the fresh spawn 
we have zero fame points. So I could probably buy very, very, very limited stuff from the traders. I certainly couldn't go and buy, you know, uh, 50 cal, for example, because I'm not famous, quote unquote, enough to be able to get that weapon. And you get fame points by simply traveling the map on foot, in vehicle, in a plane. It's all calculated. Again, you need to go and read the patch notes for the full details. Um, but you get fame points by traveling the map, by looting, killing players, killing puppets, and looting certain items. And the higher loot tier, so, and the rarity, so if you find a drill, which is quite rare, you get more fame points for it. If you find bobby pins, you probably get less fame points for it because it's not so rare. Uh, and selling items, that's how you get your fame points up, basically. So you need to work for it now. You can't just basically find some cash and go and buy it because if you don't have fame points, you can't buy it. So it kind of makes you travel the map makes you be a bit more survival, a bit more looty, or just kill players, I guess, if you're on a multiplayer server. But for a single player server, it's going to be, you know, the same thing. Traveling, looting, crafting, all that kind of stuff. Radiation. Obviously, comes with 0 0.8 is the nuclear power plant, the big, big, massive POI, and it is humongous. So... <clears throat> this is what you can find in the nuclear power plant. And you can also find um, uh, nuclear, not nuclear, sorry, radioactive blocks as well, which you can sell, but they say that they want to implement more things regarding that later down the line. So right now they can only be sold. But the biggest prize, it's a, it's a very high risk, high reward place, the nuclear power plant is you get depleted uranium. Each one of these discs is worth 6k when you sell it. On vanilla, obviously, if you're an admin, you can change the settings how you want. But on vanilla, they're worth 6k, which is a lot. But in order to carry them out safely, you need to have a depleted uranium container. Both of these things can be found in the nuclear power plant. Um, and interestingly, what they've done this time is that they have locked the containers with a silver lock. So it's not going to be <clears throat> a quick and easy basic lock pick. You're going to, you know, have to speed up your lock picking skills a bit because I think you've got three seconds or two seconds or four seconds, something like that, to be able to open these to get them out. But if you, you know, build your character well, and you increase your skills, it should be no harm for a silver lockpick. It should be fine. But yeah, these are the depleted uranium. And they should be radioactive. But obviously, as this is a as a just as a test thing on my test server, I've just spawned these in now. So they're not radioactive. Uh, so they're not doing any me any harm. But these will be radioactive in the nuclear power plant. Which is just over there. And that's why in a, in order to get them out you need the, the canister. And obviously they all fit in the canister. You, know, you can get eight in there. <clears throat> so that's a hefty chunk of money. You can get eight in there and you can actually put this in your backpack, a hiking backpack, you can fit it in. So you could probably get two or three in your hiking backpack plus one in your hand. That's a, that's a chunk of money that is. That is a proper chunk of money that you can make right there. But going to the nuclear power plant is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. That moves on to the hazmat suits that you need. You've got the two variants. You've got the modern hazmat suit, which, let's be honest, makes you look like a minion. There is no other way around it. You simply look like Steve. That's it. You just look like Steve. Obviously, as you just saw, it removes all of your clothes. So, <clears throat> you need to remember about your bank cards. Because if you change your clothes and you don't pick up your bank card, you can't buy anything at the traders. 
and you will have to buy a new bank card activate that bank card to be able to uh, buy anything at the traders but if you <clears throat> leave your cards in your clothes on the floor like this and someone else on a multiplayer server comes along and finds them he will be, he will he or she will be able to take that and then simply transfer your funds into his account if he's managed to get to the trader before you have deactivated that card and activated a new one just like in real life just like in real life which is awesome awesome so you have to remember to keep these somewhere safe i would suggest your shoes keep them in your shoes although with the hazmat suit on obviously everything has been taken off you can have a backpack on with the hazmat suit it will allow you to have a backpack but that's it you can't have night vision goggles you can't have boots it's just a hazmat suit and a backpack and the modern one gives you a fair bit of space what well, you can get one two three twelve but it's twelve by uh twelve by three basically is what you can get in there which is not bad uh, there's a little bit of space in there to get your uranium but like i said you don't want to be there too long because you start getting radiation poisoning Oh, I forgot to um, spawn in the iodine pills as well for the uh, radiation. So yeah, that's the modern hazmat suit. And then you've got the vintage hazmat suit. Uh, both items can only be found in bunkers, in special locked containers, which will have a symbol of radiation on it, so you know what it looks like. So you might get one with a modern... You might get one with the vintage. As you can see, the vintage is exactly the same thing. You can only wear this and a backpack, but it has a lot less more, a lot less storage space. The uh, modern hazmat suit. Let me just put my clothes on so I don't freeze to death. So they're the two hazmat suits, which I'm looking forward to finding out in the world, being a minion. Obviously, you've got the iodine pills, which I suggest you take before you go into the nuclear power plant. And one pill lasts 20 minutes. Again, more information are on the patch notes, so I suggest you read the patch, note, patch notes about how the iodine pills work. Also, just a quick note on the hazmat suits. Uh, if they get damaged, and if you're skilled enough to get into the... Um, nuclear power plant without getting a hit from a puppet then congratulations and hats off to you sir because let me tell you that place is full of puppets and I mean full of puppets so you can't repair them with your standard repair kit like you can normal clothes you need to use duct tape so it's also good if you've got the hazmat suit on is to just keep a roll of duct tape in there just in case because if you get a tear in it then you start getting the radiation poisoning and the effects are uh, in your metabolism of how you know, the radiation poisoning starts working so again i suggest highly suggest you go and read up the patch notes of how it all works and the rules and all that kind of stuff but they're the hazmat suits geiger counters you got the analog one, which you can see you've got the little bar going up. Now, this should make a noise on these depleted uranium things, but because these have spawned in, I'm guessing they're not registered as radioactive. So it's not making any noise, but it should. I think everybody knows the sound of a Geiger counter. Um, and you can see there's a little post-it note. Zero to four, happy faces, four to eight. Not great, not terrible. 8 to 12 dead so you want to keep that bar as low as possible but yeah it's not making any noise but it should do really and you need this you know it will be a lot easier to use this to search because when it starts going off the charts then you know that you're getting close to the rain to the uranium rather than just opening every single box you can find so that's the analog one and then this is the improvised one which again should beep but it doesn't and you can 
turn it on and then simply if you have a backpack leave it in your backpack it will still work you will still hear the audio beep but obviously on the analog one you won't see the dial move but you should still hear the the uh the noise of the geiger counter when you get close to the uranium and i'm pretty sure you can craft uh where is it where would it be I'm fine. Five. Here. Surprised it's. Oh, there we go. Geiger counter. So three scrap. Two uses of a wire, duct tape, five bolts and a crowbar so it's actually not too difficult Th those resources are not too difficult to find to build it so you can at least get one of those before you go in anywhere so i suggest you do that that's the hazmat stuff farming nuclear stuff farming industrial garden hoe improvised garden hoe hose no comment so farming comes under the new building the modular building now there is a new tab tab number three which is the building tab where you've got all of your building stuff so they have removed all of the building from the crafting menu now and they've separated it completely into its own building tab now garden box let's just do a simple one for now you can no, just spread it along with your mouse, how big you want it. You can make it... Whoa, that's quite big. But we'll just do a little baby one now. And there you have a gardening box. And seeds. <clears throat> there are hundreds... Well, not hundreds, but there's about 10 or 12 different seed types. We've just got some fig seeds for here for now, just for this test. If you hold right mouse, you focus in, and you can see the plot where you will put those seeds. So, you know, people can be creative. You could have fig, tomato, potato, apple, blah, 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 blah. You know, you can do whatever you want, or you can have one box for each seed. But let's plant that in. And then it should. It takes a little bit of time, I have to say. Does take a little bit of time. Yeah, there we go. So you can see there the water. It's got no seeds. Nothing has germinated. Nothing has grown. It's getting plenty of sunlight, but it's got no water and it's got no fertilizer. But and that finishes. And now you should see. See, there you go. Just see that little brown, dark brown patch. That's where those seeds have just been planted. It's difficult to see in your own shadow, but that's where they've just been planted. So, we pick up a bag of fruit. Should be able to add some fertilizer to this. That's a bit quicker. I'm guessing it's one use, yeah. So a whole bag gives you 25 uses, so it's going to be good to find these lying around. Now, if we check again, there you go. It's got industrial fertilizer. It's a fee. It's a fig seed, but it hasn't any water. But what I also forgot to spawn in was a uh, watering can. <clears throat> yeah. Now I don't know if this add fertilizer it does have water. Maybe it doesn't need watering. Maybe it doesn't need watering. Okay. Add fertilizer. Let's check. There is stuff in it, isn't there? Still. Yes. There's definitely water in it. So you will need a watering can, but I think because this is on, because I've done this on God mode, I think it doesn't need it. Or maybe it will deplete over time. Strange. It says zero. I'm guessing that's water. That might be 
pesticides and herbicides, which you also need. Again, how this all works is in the patch notes, so I suggest you go and read that on how all the farming works. But that's basically how the farming works, just a little plot where you put your seeds in. Now, in order to build now, you have to have a flag to use the modular building. So, let's go ahead and quickly whip something together. Foundation. Whatever. Quickly knock something together. Um, again, it all snaps too, which is nice and easy. Crafting. Whoops. Oh. Stay there, thank you. Oh, and of course, you can upgrade these in the normal way. Metal. Oh, that's probably because of my engineering skills. Uh, I just have a randomized character. But I'm guessing this will be based off of your engineering skills. Why you can't? Why I can't go any further? So again, something to think about when you're creating your character and where you want to take it. You know. And it makes you, you know, build in the game to upgrade upgrade your bases, basically. And then you've got a wall. So it's ten sticks, three logs, three uses of rope, and a saw of some kind. You've got a half wall, you've got a low wall, and you've got a loophole, which I'm guessing is a, a window. There you go. So that's what the twig looks like. Pretty cool with the little window to shoot from. And if we upgrade it quickly... That's the wooden one. Quite nice. I do like the logs on the outside. I make a nice log cabin in the woods somewhere. And then a metal one. Again, same kind of thing. And obviously gives you a lot more HP. Um, obviously, you can't just go willy-nilly. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever played Valheim, it's the same kind of system. You need the support for each bit. So you can't just build six walls high without having a floor and some supports of some kind. You need to be able to have the support to hold the weight and go further. Um, let's just put a door frame in here. Quickly. And then let's put a single door. There we go. <clears throat> Got ourselves a single door. So you can see how it works, basically. You know, it just all snaps to like it did before. But obviously, you can basically create whatever you want. And flooring. You want second floors, or third floors, or fourth floors, or fifth floors. You know, I, I cannot wait to see the creations that people are going to make, because I'm sure, you know, they're going to be building massive... Uh, I didn't actually leave myself room to get upstairs, did I? That was silly. But staircases. Uh, not that way. We on that way. Yeah, that one, and... Upgrade the stairs. There you go. Basic structure, nothing special. And then roofing. You've got the 45 degree roof. Way. And that one. That one. It's together. Then you've obviously got the triangular roof tips. Well, that then, how would you square that off, I guess, with maybe a half wall? Go. And let's just put, oh, I fell down. What does that look like from the other side? Is that, yeah, see, that's sticking out there. But you get the gist of it. You can build all sorts of things. Why can I not open the door? Oh. 
Hmm. I cannot open the door. Why not? Ah, there we go. Okay, don't know what happened there. But you get the gist of it, yeah? You can build pretty much whatever you want. You know, it's People are going to have so much fun basically building whatever they want. And I think it is going to be awesome to see the creations of what people have got. <clears throat> that was one of the bugs. I think this has already been reported. But you can see there's a bit of a difference in the angle of the, the square and the 45 degree. The 45 degree sits a little bit lower. So when you put those two together, there's actually a gap. Uh, but I'm sure that will be patched in no time. They're normally really good with that kind of stuff. So that's the modular base building. <clears throat> it's going to be awesome to, you know, put your creations together. And again, obviously, you have to go and get the resources, twigs, logs. So somewhere near a forest. And then you've got a nice spiral staircase and a triangular foundation. And then also you've got the normal stuff as well. Um... Interestingly, I've just noticed that they have actually removed the cabins completely. They've gone. So you will now have to create whatever you want. Oh, you can still do a wood wall. Okay. So you can still do that then. Fair enough. Okay. Cool. Yeah, aeroplane. Aeroplane door. So that's the modular base building. All right, up next, <clears throat> last but not least, is my favorite thing. Modular vehicles. And this is it. The Wolf's Wagon. There should be the larder, but the larder is currently broken. So they have removed it from this patch. Uh, and they'll fix it and they'll bring it in later on. But there should be the the wada. Obviously, this one is one that I've spawned in. Look what you can do. And remove everything. Put that on the floor. Remove that one. That on the floor. Move all this armor. Obviously, you can get different armor. <clears throat> I think there's light armor and heavy armor only from the traders. Move. Let's take all of this off. You can remove the. You can remove the seat. It's a bit um, sticky where you need to stand. You have to get. Just in the right spot to be able to, uh, yeah, look, so you, you need to get just in the right spot to be able to take this stuff off. Down there. So that's what it basically looks like when you see it in the world. But some of them will come with no doors. You can take the door off. That over there. You can't take the wheel off, but I'll get to that in a second. So, the creations that people are going to, you know, come up with with this is just going to be awesome as well. And you can take the seats out. Get rid of that. You can open the hood. You can do all sorts with it. It's just awesome. I absolutely love it. Uh, you can't do any engine work out in the world. You can only do engine work at the mechanics, at the traders, on the ramps. You have to drive into the mechanics uh, and then you get the option service now. But there will be a charge. It will cost you to service the engine. So if you find one of these out in the world <clears throat> with no engine in it, no seats, no doors, no nothing, just close that. What you can do, which I think is an amazing feature, I think it is awesome push and now this isn't any old push this is a proper push look at this this is just such a small detail but it just makes it so much better the fact that you can do this you can bring one vehicle to another and obviously if you're on a multiplayer server your your teammates can push from the other side so you pick up a bit more speed and go further Again, it depends on your strength, how strong you are as to how 
much weight you can push <clears throat> and how fast you will push it. Can we get it back here? Oh, we're going to get it back. Oh, there we go. But you can't go backwards. You see? You can't go backwards, which is really strange. But I don't know if that's a bug or if it's meant to be like that. Wheels. You now have a car jack. Pick up a car jack. Um, service vehicle on jack. Now, you can remove the wheels. And we can put this one over here. Replace it with this one. Uh, install. Same. You can only do one at a side. I, <clears throat> one jack at a time. You can't have two jacks. If you go to the mechanic in the trader... The whole thing is lifted into the air, and then you can just go all the way around it. Um, remove hood. Put that over there. You can, you know, there's just so much you can do here. It's just awesome. I absolutely love it. Remove the back bumper. Remove the doors. Remove this door. Now you can make it. And I hope that in the future, because right now we've only got these sort of sets of stuff, I hope that they bring out more seats and things like that for the future. So you can't do anything with the engine. There's nothing you can do with the engine here. And then to get it back, just simply end service. Don't forget about your jack. It does have a fairly decent storage space. I would probably say it's the same as a pickup. Um, fairly decent storage space. But you see, now it's got no seat. Oh, hang on. Can I drive it? I did see drive. Just flat. There you go. Can I? Can I? Wait. Wait. Oh. It wants to. I, do, I don't think it should. I don't think it should. Ah, no. So you can't drive. No, okay. Cool. Nice. Excellent. Good to know. Uh, what's this? Uh, front left. Yes. So you can only drive it with a seat. That's, again, an awesome feature. This is why I love Scum. It is such a good game. Look at this, man. This is just awesome. I love it. This is awesome. Okay, the uh, character model is a little bit uh, ski-whiff there. <laughs> he seems to have folded his arms in on himself. But okay. You know. I'm sure that will be fixed down the line. And I tell you what, this thing, it's not like driving the SUVs or the pickups. It's so much more whippy. You can really throw it around and hammer it around. You know, it just flicks about like a little go-kart. It really does. So, yeah. That's basically it. You know, on, on a, I wanted this to be a quick video. I've gone a bit longer than I wanted, but that's basically... A quick little video of 0 0.8. Like I said, I will leave the link in the description for the patch notes. I really highly recommend that you go and read it to get all of the correct information about the banking, the nuclear power plant, the radiation effects that has on you and your body, the modular vehicles, uh, the cost of respawning, and all that kind of stuff. I highly, highly recommend you go and read that. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the notification bell so you get notifications of my videos whenever they go live. Just look at that, man. That's so good. I love it. I love it. I cannot wait. And I'll catch you all on the first episode of 0 0.8 very, very soon.